Imagine for a second that you're one of the very first people to set foot on Pleistocene Australia around 50,000 years ago. While giant megafaunal animals such as Smilodon and mammoths dominated the northern hemisphere as some of the largest terrestrial animals, Australia's geographic isolation from the rest of the world for untold millions of years made it an incredible place for evolution to experiment with. The largest lizards alive today are the Komodo dragons. With lengths of over 6.6 .6 feet, these animals prey upon deers, large mammals, and have even attacked humans. However, in the not so distant past, a monstrous lizard many times the size of a Komodo dragon existed. When you first begin exploring the lands of Australia, you start to find incredible and unique animals you've never seen before. Instead of placental mammals found in every continent besides Antarctica, you discover that Australia's only group of mammals to successfully colonize its lands were marsupials. In marsupials, the females typically have a pouch in which they rear their young through infancy, thereby differencing from placental mammals, which give birth to fully formed young. Placental mammals have dominated every other continent since the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, appearing as the main group of mammalian animals. In the absence of placentals, marsupials diverged and spread rapidly in the prehistoric landscapes of Australia. The largest native Australian animal to have survived into the present day is the modestly sized kangaroo. Similarly, the largest surviving carnivorous marsupial mammal is the Tasmanian devil, but even they look like a cute puppy next to the now extinct marsupial lion. Size to body weight ratio, the marsupial lion may have had the strongest bite of any carnivore ever known. Estimates for this animal's average size range from 101 to 130 kilograms. However, it is believed that some especially large individuals may have tipped the scales at over 160 kilograms. Unfortunately, today, Australia is a land stripped of its megafauna. But it wasn't always this way. When humans first set foot in Australia as little as 50,000 years ago, Australia was home to a diverse and magnificent array of ecosystems which hosted its own group of unique megafauna, unlike that seen in any other landmass. Instead of mammoths in the north, there were the rhino-sized dipodons, also known as the giant wombat. Instead of ostriches, there were the enormous 250 kilograms genionus, also known as the thunderbirds. And instead of carnivorans, giant reptiles such as land crocodiles and monitor lizards, including the largest lizard in recorded history, Megalania, dominated Australia's landscape as the apex predator. At this time in the Pleistocene, Australia was home to three extremely large-bodied monitor lizards, Komodo dragons, a larger but presently undescribed species, and of course the largest lizard ever to have inhabited our planet, Megalania, scientifically known as Varanus priscus. With body length approaching 5 to 7 meters long, and with masses of up to 2.2 tons, this animal would have been an absolute terror for the native Australians. Of course, it's important to know that in the absence of complete fossil skeletons, there are no definite estimates for the size of this animal. However, even using some of the smaller size calculations, it was most probably still comfortably the largest lizard ever to have inhabited our planet. At this time, the range of Komodo dragons were much larger, spreading into much of northern Australia, and it is likely that Megalania encountered and possibly competed with its smaller cousin. During the Pleistocene epoch, Megalania was merely one of a large array of different reptiles that inhabited Australia. Reptiles that included giant horned turtles, land crocodiles, and an incredible diversity of snake species. However, with the presence of the marsupial lion, it shows that Australia still had the equivalent of a large cat species, and shows that Australia's large terrestrial predatory niches were not exclusively being occupied by giant reptiles back then. After the mass extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs 65 million years ago, very few prehistoric reptiles have reached enormous sizes, Megalania being an exception. Lizards have formed a large part of Australia's animals since the Miocene. Today, Australia has the largest diversity of lizards than in any other place around the world. Over the past decades, scientists have tried to get to the bottom of this mystery. Some scientists suggest that the sporadic and unpredictable rain in Australia favours animals with low energy requirements like lizards over high energy consuming animals like birds and mammals. Additionally, the high diversity of termites allow many termite consuming lizards to coexist. However, at the end of the day, scientists do not have a wide accepted theory as to why lizards have such a high diversity in Australia. 
Anyway, Megalania lived on the eastern side of Australia, inhabiting a variety of different habitats, including open forests, woodlands, and perhaps even grasslands. And whilst fossils of this reptile are rare, its remains have been discovered as far as Queensland to beyond New South Wales. However, Megalania is not yet known from Tasmania, Western Australia, or New Guinea. This giant reptile terrorized the Australian landscape from 4 million to 30,000 years ago. This was late enough that some prehistoric humans may have found themselves encountering this lizard. And I'm pretty sure you can agree with me, that this apex predator probably wouldn't have been too intimidated by these newly arrived weird looking hairless apes. In terms of this animal's diet, it would have had a plethora of large megafauna animals to consume. Remains of Megalania have been found with large animals like kangaroos, suggesting that Megalania may have taken on large prey like the modern day Komodo dragon. Like other monitor lizards, Megalania may have been an ambush predator and a scavenger, which as a result, it is possible that this lizard may have had toxic saliva. This would have been an incredible advantage, as with simply one bite from this animal would have caused an infection and ultimately death to its victims. Like other members of the monitor lizards, the jawbones of Megalania are relatively slimly built, and it suggests that Megalania did not have that powerful of a bite force compared to similarly sized animals. Phylogenetic bracketing is a method of which scientists use to calculate the likelihood of an animal having certain traits based on its position in its family tree. For example, most fossilized remains of mammals don't have direct evidence of fur. However, because their relatives do, we assume that they did as well. So when applying phylogenetic bracketing to Megalania, it suggests that this animal utilized large serrated teeth along with an anticoagulant and hypertensive inducing venom to capture and subdue its prey like its modern day relatives still do. Scientists from the University of Melbourne used computer models to investigate the strength of the Komodo dragon's bite. The researchers have found that these animals actually have a comparatively weak bite force when compared to saltwater crocodiles. To compensate, when the Komodo dragons first bite their prey, they inflict large amounts of damage with their serrated teeth by pulling back. At the same time, it injects a devastating venom that prevents blood from clotting, leaving its victim to die of blood loss. At the same time, the venom rapidly lowers the blood pressure, sending the animal into shock. A study found that whilst Megalania's skull is lightweight and relatively poorly adapted for high bite forces, it's better adapted for resisting high pulling loads just like its relative the Komodo dragon. The venom of the Komodo dragon is not the same as snake venom. They don't just bite their prey and simply wait for the venom to kill them. Instead, their venom results in an anticoagulation, which increases the blood loss of their prey. Megalania also appears to have had a similar skull structure and teeth. This suggests that Megalania may be the largest venomous creature to ever have lived on our planet. This also seems to support the fact that Megalania was an active hunter and not just a scavenger. In fact, it is believed that Megalania is the sister taxon to Komodo dragons, thus making the Komodo dragon its closest living relative. Both taxons appear to share several of the same features in the otic region of their skull, which is basically just the ears. Additional similarities include the configuration of the foramen facialis. Megalania belongs to the group known as monitor lizards. A monitor lizard is any animal belonging to the group of lizards known as Varanidae, from which there are currently only two living genuses alive today, Varanus and Lanthanatus. However, there have been at least six genuses to have ever existed on our planet, many of which became extinct during the KT mass extinction 66 million years ago that ended the age of the reptiles. Currently, there is only one species of monitor lizard in the genus Lanthanatus. The species is a tiny earless monitor lizard that inhabits Southeast Asia and lives a semi-aquatic lifestyle. All the rest of the living monitor lizards belong into the genus known as Varanus. About 50 species of Varanus are recognized as monitor lizards. Most have an elongated head and neck, a relatively heavy build, a long tail, and well-developed legs. Their tongues are long, forked, and snake-like. In fact, According to the Australian Museum, monitor lizards are more closely related to snakes than to any other lizards. Molecular evidence suggests that monitor lizards evolved during the early Cretaceous, between 140 to 100 million years ago in Northern Asia, although there are no fossil evidence for this yet. They then expanded during the Miocene to reach Europe, Africa, and Australia. 
monitor lizards would have arrived in Australia from Asia across the various islands that would have been in existence between Australia and Asia for millions of years. Most monitor lizards today have a higher metabolic rate when compared to similar sized lizards when they are active, but use similar amounts of energy when at rest. Lizards and other reptiles require much less food than similarly sized mammals due to their slower metabolic rates. Now this adaptation can certainly be a good thing in times of food scarcity, however one significant downside is that lizards are limited by the amount of heat available in their environment. Unlike other lizards, monitor lizards are capable of generating small amounts of metabolic heat when they are active. Additionally, these animals show a number of physiological adaptations that allow their muscles to receive plentiful oxygen even when under incredible physical activity. For example, the Pygmy Gillens monitor can run for an amazing 1 km an hour for many minutes without showing any sign of exhaustion, which is much more than most other lizards can do. Monitor lizards can achieve this due to their large efficient lungs supplying large amounts of blood containing a protein that prevents the buildup of acidic waste. Additionally, their hearts limit the mixing of deoxygenated and oxygenated blood, an adaptation not seen in any other group of reptiles. Add to all this their high metabolic rate and these adaptations allow monitor lizards to achieve incredible strength and endurance. Because Megalania at the end of the day was simply another species of monitor lizard, it is highly likely, in fact almost certain that they had these adaptations as well, which would have allowed them to be phenomenal hunters in Pleistocene Australia. But no matter how well these adaptations were for Megalania, they weren't enough for this animal to ultimately succumb to extinction. The question obviously is why. Fossil evidence from most continents point to a dramatic extinction of mainly large animals at the end of the last glaciation period, roughly 11,000 years ago. Large animals were worst affected because they already exist at a relatively low population density, mature late, and often have few offspring. Many animals that went extinct at the end of the last ice age were giant herbivorous mammals, such as mammoths. However, in biologically isolated regions of our planet, large flightless birds, turtles, and lizards also suffered much of the same fate. Interestingly, the extinction of the Australian megafauna seems to have occurred at a much earlier time than in other parts of the world. It has been estimated that the extinction occurred between 51 to 20,000 years ago. And by 16,000 years ago, roughly 86% of Australia's megafauna had vanished into extinction, unfortunately including Megalania. The exact timing of the extinction and causes and possible associations with humans is controversial. Cuddly Springs is an ancient lake bed in the semi-arid zone of north central New South Wales. Remains of ancient Pleistocene megafauna have been found in the centre of the lake bed and starting in the 1930s, five megafauna species have been identified. Eventually their work began to find evidence of the animals being hunted by humans, as the fossils themselves show evidence of cut marks indicating that these animals were butchered by humans. Additionally, stone tools were discovered made by early humans. A small stone tool was found lodged between a dipodon mandible and a genionus femur. The tool had traces of dried blood and wear patterns consistent with the use in butchering. Radiocarbon dating of the butchered animal remains indicated that this activity took place between 40 to 31,000 years ago. However, there are numerous problems to be considered when radiocarbon dating collagen extracted from bones that have been repeatedly wetted and dried in hot climates, so these ages are suspicious. In 2001, using OSL dating of the grains of sand from the fossil bed point to a much earlier time period, between 30 and 28,000 years. Another study in 2001 pointed to an even earlier time. In their view, the Australian megafauna from Cuddly Springs disappeared around 28,000 years ago. So depending on what dates you choose to believe in, the extinction of the Australian megafauna occurred almost immediately following the arrival of humans or persisted for tens of thousands of years after humans arrived. Anyway, enough talking about humans, let's move on to other possible reasons for the extinction. Towards the end of the last ice age, Australia's climate was shifting from being cold and dry to warm and dry. There is a growing consensus in the scientific community that Australia was subject to a progressive drying period starting as early as 700,000 years ago, and most notably within the last 350 to 400,000 years ago. 
Using ice core data from Antarctica, researchers have discovered that the last five interglacial periods, which are the warm periods in between ice ages, were on average warmer than the ones that preceded it, starting about 450,000 years ago. In short, the temperature swings of the last few glacial cycles were without precedent, and the last glacial cycle exhibits unusual variability. This almost certainly would have played a major role in the extinction of the Australian megafauna. At the end of the last ice age, most inland lakes became completely dry or significantly reduced in the warmer seasons. Most large predominantly browsing animals lost their habitat and retreated to a narrow band in eastern Australia, where there was permanent water and better vegetation. So as it stands, there is still no definitive answer as to why the Australian megafauna including Megalania went extinct. However, the two main theories as I discussed earlier are climate change and human exploitation. For whatever the reason, it seems that by about 10,000 years ago, unfortunately almost all of Australia's large animals, including Megalania, disappeared into extinction.